Greetings from Pristine. The reading that we are going to cover in this session is Portfolio Risk Analytical Methods. Now let us talk about the VAR concepts for a portfolio. So on this slide we are going to introduce certain VAR concepts for portfolio. We are going to cover all these concepts in detail in the coming slides. So let us start with individual VAR. Individual VAR is a VAR for an isolated position. So it is a VAR corresponding to a particular position in a portfolio. This individual VAR can be calculated by the formula VAR is equal to Z value into standard deviation of that particular position into portfolio value into the weightage of that particular position. So if I have to simplify this formula for you, I can write it as VAR for an isolated position is given by ZC into the standard deviation of that isolated position into the value of that position. Now this value of this position can also be written down as the portfolio value into the position weightage as it is given in this formula. Now let us talk about diversified portfolio VAR. Now diversified portfolio VAR is a VAR of the entire portfolio. Why this is known as diversified portfolio VAR? Because it takes into account the diversification effects. So all the diversification effects are taken into account while calculating the diversified portfolio VAR. So diversified portfolio VAR can be calculated as VAR of the portfolio is equal to ZC into the standard deviation of the portfolio into the portfolio value. Same is given in the formula here. Now let us talk about the VAR of the portfolio when the assets are uncorrelated. So when we talk about uncorrelated assets, it means that the correlation coefficients between those two assets is zero. So in that case, the VAR of the portfolio is given by square root of VAR of asset 1 square plus VAR of asset 2 square. So in the coming slide, we are going to discuss this formula in a bit more detail. Now what is the VAR of the portfolio when the assets are perfectly correlated? Now when the assets are perfectly correlated, the correlation coefficient between those two assets is 1. And in that case, the VAR of the portfolio is given by the formula VAR of asset 1 plus VAR of asset 2. Again, uh, we'll talk more about this formula in the coming slides. Now let us discuss the last concept uh, for VAR in a portfolio. Now it says that standard deviation for an equally weighted portfolio with equal standard deviations and correlation is given by this formula. Now let us try to understand what this statement is actually saying. Now let us assume that there are n assets in a portfolio. All the assets in the portfolio have same weight w. They have same standard deviation which is given by sigma and the correlation between all the assets is same which is given by rho. Now if all these conditions are satisfied then the standard deviation of the portfolio can be calculated with the formula given as sigma p is equal to sigma square root of 1 by n where n is the number of asset plus the correlation coefficient multiplied by 1 minus 1 by n. So in the case where all these conditions are satisfied we can directly calculate the standard deviation of the portfolio by using this formula. We'll discuss this formula again uh, in a bit detail in the coming slides and we'll try to solve a problem based on this. Now let us talk about few more VAR concepts for a portfolio. These are marginal VAR, incremental VAR and component VAR. Now let us discuss a bit about marginal VAR. Marginal VAR is a change in the portfolio VAR for an additional investment in a position. Now when we talk about marginal VAR, there is an additional investment in an already existing position. So there is an already existing position in a portfolio. So we are making some additional investment in that and how the VAR of the portfolio changes because of that additional investment is given by our marginal VAR. The marginal VAR can be calculated by the formula. So a marginal VAR so our marginal VAR for a particular position say i is denoted as m var i and it is given by the formula zc into covariance of the return of that position and the return of portfolio divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio. 
the marginal VAR can also be given by the formula which is VAR of the portfolio into beta i. Beta i is particular to that position divided by the portfolio value. So we are going to talk uh, more about these two formulas in a bit detail in the coming slides. Now it says that portfolio VAR can be reduced by reducing allocation to those positions which have high marginal VAR. So if the investment manager has a particular capital with him, uh, he cannot increase or decrease that capital, then he can reduce the portfolio VAR by reducing the allocation to high marginal VAR assets. But let's talk about the incremental VAR. Incremental VAR is the increase in VAR from the addition of new position in a portfolio. Now please uh, focus on here, addition of new position in a portfolio. In marginal VAR, there was an additional investment in an existing position that but in incremental VAR, there is altogether a new position or a new asset that has been added to the portfolio. So please uh, be clear with the difference between marginal VAR and incremental VAR. Component VAR is the amount of risk a particular position contributes to a portfolio. The component VAR is denoted by CVARI which means the component VAR for a particular position and the total VAR of the portfolio can be calculated as sigma i is equal to 1 to n CVARI. Again, we are going to talk about all these three uh, VAR concepts in detail in the coming slides. Now let us discuss about the concept of individual VAR in a bit detail. Now in the first slide we have already talked about individual VAR as a VAR of an individual position in isolation. So when we calculate individual VAR, the concept of diversification is not there. So it is a VAR of an individual position in isolation. So let us suppose that the weight of that individual position is WI. Now the VAR of that individual position can be calculated with the formula. We have already discussed that in the first slide is given by ZC into standard deviation of that individual position into the value of that individual position. Now again as I told you this value of the individual position can be broken down into the portfolio value into the weight of that individual position. So here we say P is the portfolio value and this PI is the nominal amount invested in the position I. Now the next topic is diversified portfolio VAR. Now we have already discussed diversified portfolio VAR takes into con consideration all the diversification effects. The diversified portfolio VAR is given by the formula VAR of the portfolio is equal to ZC into standard deviation of the portfolio into the portfolio value. Now ZC is the Z score associated with a particular level of confidence which is C. Sigma P as we have already discussed is the standard deviation of portfolio returns and P is the nominal amount invested in the portfolio. Now the standard deviation of the portfolio which is Sigma P can be calculated by the formula which is given on this slide. So probably this formula might look big but don't lay too much importance on this. We'll try to simplify this formula when we talk about two assets in particular. So if I have to explain you this formula, this sigma p is equal to square root of summation of w i square into sigma 1 square. So this is the standard deviation of a particular asset in the portfolio. And the next term talks about the diversification effects. So if you see here, there is a rho i j, which is the correlation coefficient which is the correlation coefficient between the two assets i and j. So we will try to simplify this formula in coming slides when we talk about particularly two assets. Now let us talk about the role correlation has on portfolio risk. So in the first slide we already talked about when two assets are uncorrelated what will be the portfolio VAR, what will be the portfolio VAR when two assets are perfectly correlated. But for that for us to understand how these formulas are coming, let us discuss, discuss what would be the VAR of a portfolio when there are two assets in the portfolio. So this is given by the formula here when there are only two assets, standard deviation of the portfolio is given by the square root of the VAR contributed by 
the first asset the var contributed by the second asset plus now we will take the diversification effect into account which is given by 2 w1 w2 sigma 1 sigma 2 into rho 1 comma 2 Now this row one comma two is the correlation coefficient between asset one and two. This is the correlation coefficient. Okay. So if this formula is clear to you, then we can calculate the standard deviation of the portfolio when the two assets are uncorrelated. So when two assets are uncorrelated, the correlation coefficient will be zero. so in case of uncorrelated assets the standard deviation of the portfolio can be given as sigma 1 square plus w2 sigma 2 square you see that the third term will be zero because the correlation coefficient is zero so therefore the var of a portfolio when two assets are uncorrelated is given by the formula var of 1 square plus var of 2 square and it is a square root of whole Now let us discuss what will be the standard deviation of the portfolio when two assets are perfectly correlated. So when two assets are perfectly correlated, the correlation coefficients between those two assets will be one. So this is what. So if we substitute one here, we get the standard deviation of the portfolio as w1 sigma one plus w2 sigma two. Okay. so therefore the var of the portfolio when the assets are perfectly correlated is given by var of portfolio 1 plus var of portfolio 2 now how to arrive at var when you have standard deviation we already know that formula the var of the portfolio is given by zc into standard deviation of the portfolio into the portfolio value so you only have to substitute this sigma p for the situation depending upon whatever is the correlation coefficient so if the correlation coefficient is 0 you will substitute sigma p as sigma p is equal to square root of w1 square plus sigma 1 square plus w2 square plus sigma 2 square but if the assets are perfectly correlated the sigma p will be w1 sigma 1 plus w2 sigma 